Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Using Variables with Exponents, Part 1. So here we want to start to inch our way to doing uh, a lot of operations with variables. Remember, a variable is when we have a letter, like A or B or X or Y, any letter you want, that is just a placeholder for some number. We don't really know exactly what it is, maybe uh, in some problems, but a letter is just a placeholder for a number. Right, we want to get you comfortable and familiar with seeing letters in math because it's not going to go away. You might ignore it for a while, but eventually it's going to come back and it's going to come back big time because we have to use letters going forward when we solve more complicated problems. So for this lesson, we're going to take the baby steps. We're going to start to talk about what happens when you have a variable and then you have an exponent. And as you go through the problems with me, you'll see it's very, very simple concept. All right. So all I want you to do, for instance, is I want to cal I want you to calculate the value of the variable a squared, right? But I want you to do it when I'm going to tell you what the value of a is. A is equal to three. Remember, I told you a variable is just a letter that often we don't know what it is, right? So in this case, we know what it is. I'm telling you that the value of a, the variable a, is three. I'm telling you that. So it's literally like a placeholder. If I tell you that this is a marker, but then in a, in a, in a minute I tell you that this marker is really equal to an elephant, then you know that this thing is equal to an elephant. I mean, of course it's not, but I'm just telling you this marker is a placeholder, and I can tell you whatever I want. I can tell you whatever, uh, I can tell you it's not really called a marker. I can tell you it's called a Zimbabdebob. Right? And, and you're like, well, what, what? But I just, I'm telling you this object of a marker is a placeholder for whatever I tell you it is. So it's a Zimbabdebob, right? Well, this thing is a variable. It's a placeholder for whatever I tell you it's equal to. Now, later in the, in the class, there will be times when we don't know what the, what the variable letter is and we have to figure it out. But in this case, I'm telling you that the value of this thing is equal to three. And then I'm also telling you that what happens if I take this variable a and I square it, right? I want you to calculate the value there. So all you have to do is say, well, I'm given that a is squared, okay? And then I'm going to say, well, okay, what is that equal to? Well, I'm told that a is equal to 3. So I can take this value of a and I can stick it in here. It's like a direct substitution because we know that a is squared, but now that I'm telling you that a is three, I can stick it right into this position since they're equal there, since the variable is the same variable, and basically say that that's the same as three squared. Because a squared is this thing, but I'm telling you that a is three. So I just stick it in there and I'm saying, I'm substituted into the place where a is, and so it's equal to three squared. And I already know that the, the calculation of an exponent is three in this case times three because the base is three and we're doing it two times with the exponent here. So it's three times three. And so that equals nine. So at the end of the day, what I really want you to write on your paper is that the value of the, what we call the expression a squared when a is equal to three is equal to nine, right? Because we start with this point a squared. Then we say, well, a is three. We stick it in there. So it has to be three squared. And then this is equal to three times three. And then this is equal to nine. So this whole chain of equal signs means that this is equal to this is equal to this is equal to this. And so then you can say this is equal to what's at the very end of the chain because they're all equal. So a squared is equal to nine, but it's only true when a is equal to three, which is what I gave you in the problem statement. All right. So this is just going to be a little lesson in terms of exponents. But really, it's just trying to get you comfortable seeing letters and taking the value of the variables, the letters, and sticking them in and calculating something. That's all we're trying to do here. So let's take a look at the second problem. Let's calculate the value of x squared when I tell you that x is equal to 7. I'm telling you that x is equal to 7. And then you say, okay, well, I'm told that x, whatever x is, it's some value. It's got to be squared, right? Because I'm, I'm giving you that. But I'm telling you that x is equal to 7, so I'm going to stick it in here. And so that has to be equal to 7 squared. But I know that 7 squared is 7 times 7 because that's what the exponent is. And 7 times 7 I know is 49. Right? And so I can then say that the value of x squared when x is equal to 7 is equal to the number 49. 
And after you do a few of these, you might say, well, this is just real simple. But that's fine. That's okay. I want you to think it's simple. I want you to think, oh, it's just this. You stick it in there and you calculate. But it's more than that. It's teaching you that these letters with exponents are a thing that you're going to start seeing. And when you see it, all it means is that this has some value that you can then calculate the answer to, right? And when you see x squared is equal to 49, when x is equal to 7, then you know that when you put x is equal to 7 in here, 7 squared is 49, and it makes sense, and it works. What about the, the variable h to the fourth power when the variable h is equal to the number 1? All right, so I'm starting from my starting point. I know that the variable h is to the fourth power, but I also know that h is equal to 1. So I'll just substitute it in here and say it's 1 to the fourth power. But 1 to the fourth power is just 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. There's four of them here because it's to the fourth power. And you all know that 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, nothing ever changes, so it's just going to be equal to 1. And so I can then start from the beginning of my chain, and I can say that h to the fourth power is equal to 1. Of course, it's only true when h is equal to 1, but I gave you that in the problem statement. So h to the fourth is equal to 1. All right, next little problem here. Let's calculate the value of d squared when d, the variable, is equal to 9. Notice any letter, you can use any letter for variables. None, you know, there's none better than another. So I'm going to start with d squared. That d squared. And when d is 9, that means 9 can go right into here, and that means 9 squared. But 9 squared is 9 times 9. And 9 times 9, we already know, is 81. So what I figured out is that what I'm trying to calculate, d squared, is just equal to the number 81. Of course, it's only true when d is 9. Stick that 9 in here, 9 times 9 is 81, it makes sense. All right, we are past the halfway point here. k to the power of 3 when k is equal to 2. All right, so we start with the expression. We call it an expression when we have these letters and things running around here. Uh, calculation involving letters like this. k to the third power is equal to what? When k is 2, it goes in here. 2 to the power of 3, right? But that's 2 times 2 times 2, right? So let's calculate it in order. 2 times 2 is 4, but we still have that last times 2, and so that's equal to 8. So what we have figured out is that what I'm asking you to find, k to the power of 3 is just equal to 8. Of course, it's when k is equal to 2 that it works, because you stick that 2 in there, and then it's 2 times 2 times 2, and that is what is equal to 8. So it's kind of a lesson in exponents, but it's mostly a lesson in what a variable is, and that you can substitute in the place value for what the variable is equal to. All right, just a couple more problems. Let's take a look at y squared when y is equal to 11. All right, so we're calculating y squared. We can take that value of 11 and stick it in there, and we have to square that. So that means 11 times 11, right? Now, you can go off to the side and do 11 times 11, or you can use a calculator, and what you're going to find out is 11 times 11 is 121. 121. So what we're saying is that y squared is equal to what's over here, 121. y squared is 120. Of course, it's only true when y is equal to 11, but that's what I gave you in the problem statement. All right, we are almost done. We only have two more. Let's take a look at z to the power of 3. Uh, whoops. All right, when z is equal to the number 3. So let's substitute it in. We're calculating z to the power of 3, and that's equal to, when we put that 3 in there, it'll be 3 to the power of 3. But when I try to calculate this, that'll be 3 times 3 times 3. But the first, two, the first of these, 3 times 3 is 9, still got to go times 3. And so this 9 here times 3 is 27. And so what we have figured out is that z to the power of 3 is equal to 27. 
of course, only when z is equal to 3. That's what I'm telling you in this problem. Now, in future lessons, of course, we aren't going to know what the value, the, uh, we're not going to know what the value of the, the variable is equal to. We'll have to figure it out. But here I'm telling you what it is. And so you put it in there and you can calculate, you know, something from it. Last problem. w to the fourth power when w is equal to 2. All right, so we calculate w to the fourth power has got to be equal to, we take that 2 and put it in there, 2 to the fourth power, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. All right, I'll go underneath here. The first 2 times 2 is 4, still got a times 2 and a times 2. This 4 times 2 is 8 times 2, and so finally you'll get 16. 8 times 2 is 16. And so we figured out that w to the fourth power is 16 here. Of course, it's only true when w is equal to 2. So here, the title of the lesson was using variables and exponents, but maybe a better title would be, or an equivalent title would be, substituting the value of a variable into an expression that has an exponent. Right, that's a real long-winded thing. You can't really make that a title. So I had to call it something, using variables with exponents. But really, it's all about knowing that when you have some, anything involving a letter and a calculation, here we're using exponents, all you do is you take the value of the exponent, if you know what it is, or the value of the variable, if you know what it is, and you substitute it in. So that's what it is, because you're saying that that variable is equal to something. And then when you substitute it in, you can then calculate something. So that's an important thing. It starts to get away from the core math that you already know of adding and subtracting and into something where involving letters and unknowns, it's just a new world. So we're starting that process here, right? So I'd like you to solve all of these yourself. Make sure you understand the concept of what we're doing. Follow me on the next lesson. We will get a little more practice with variables and exponents.